This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to answer the question, did Satoshi solve the Byzantine general's problem? This is a question I've been getting from many of you for a while. This is also known as Byzantine fault, the Byzant Byzantine failure, the Byzantine agreement problem, and it's a generalized problem in computer science. And I'll link to this Wikipedia article in the description notes below. Basically, Byzantine general's problem is a game theory problem. And the question that's asking is this, how do independent parties who cannot trust each other come to an agreement or consensus without having to rely on a trusted third party? And the example that's used is 10 Byzantine generals back in the days of the Byzantine Empire. 10 Byzantine generals, each with their own armies, are getting ready to attack a city and they can only win if all 10 generals and their armies attack at the exact same time or flee at the same time and regroup later. So it's basically a coordination and consensus problem. These 10 generals need to send messages back and forth to coordinate this, but how do they know that the messengers that they send out are honest, not stupid, and that these messengers can be trusted not to alter the message? In other words, how do the generals coordinate in such an environment where they don't know who can and cannot be trusted. They cannot trust the messengers wholeheartedly, and some of the Byzantine generals themselves might even be traitors and thus cannot be trusted. And the other assumption is that there's no central authority, like a king, for example, who could coordinate or tell everybody who the trustworthy actors are. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment. Now here's a less well-known fact. There is no generalized mathematical solution to the Byzantine general's problem, and Satoshi did not solve the Byzantine general's problem, but he did do something else really clever. He created a practical workaround in the form of the Bitcoin network. He made a blockchain. Each block contains transactions. Each block is mathematically linked to the previous block using a hash so that the correct order of the blocks can be verified by anyone, because if you mix up the order of the blocks, it mixes up the order of the transactions and you end up with double spins and other problems like this. So everyone, all the Bitcoin nodes, builds their own version of the Bitcoin blockchain. Everyone runs software on their computer that verifies whether new blocks produced by the miners are following the rules. Bitcoin nodes do not trust anyone. Instead, they examine every single block and every single transaction for themselves in order to verify that the rules are being followed. If a block does not follow the rules, a node will toss it out and not add it to its own personal version of the Bitcoin blockchain. And in this way, the Bitcoin nodes converge on a shared version of the history of all Bitcoin transactions, not by trusting a central authority like Wells Fargo or Bank of America or the Federal Reserve, but instead by verifying the history of transactions for themselves. Now, if the Bitcoin miners produce a block that violates the consensus rules, all the nodes will reject that block and not add it to their personalized version of the blockchain. Miners also cannot spam the network with lots of blocks because it takes lots and lots of electricity and it's very difficult, there's a lot of proof of work required to produce a block. It's the laws of thermodynamics that rule here and there are no algorithmic shortcuts to mining or producing a new block. So this is Satoshi's real innovation. Marry the blockchain to proof of work, make it really difficult to produce a new block, but then make it really easy to verify, if you're a node, if a new block is following the rules. So it's difficult to produce a new block. It's very easy to verify whether a new block is a good block. The version of the blockchain that, number one, follows the consensus rules embedded in the software run by the nodes, and the nodes, of course, get to decide which version of the software that they're going to run. The version of the blockchain that follows the consensus rules embedded in the software run by the nodes and the version of the blockchain that contains the most embedded proof of work, not the longest chain, but the heaviest chain, is the correct and canonical version of the Bitcoin blockchain. And this is how Nakamoto consensus, as it's called, is achieved without having to rely or trust a centralized third party. So it's a practical solution to the Byzantine general's problem and not a theoretical solution. In a post from 20, uh, actually from November of 2008, Satoshi puts it this way. He says, the proof of work chain is the solution to the synchronization problem and to knowing what the globally shared view is without having to trust anyone. So he was very aware of what he was doing. The Bitcoin network is open to anyone. No permission is required to use it. You don't need permission or a license to mine Bitcoin or to run a full node. You just connect to the network 
and you do it and no one can stop you. And this is one of the really nice things compared to the traditional banking system. But because the network is open to anyone, there's always going to be some bad actors operating on it. And what we say is that we say that Bitcoin is quote unquote fault tolerant because it is still able to arrive at a decentralized consensus, a consensus of who owns which Bitcoin and what transactions were made and when. And Bitcoin is fault tolerant. It's able to tolerate the faults of malicious actors, even though they're bad actors on the network, trying to lie and steal. So the technical way of saying this you may hear is Bitcoin is a Byzantine fault tolerant system. In other words, it will continue to operate in a reliable manner, even if some of its nodes or miners fail, unplug, or act maliciously. Satoshi did not solve the Byzantine general's problem. Rather, he created a real life network that works really well to solve this problem, even under adversarial conditions. Bitcoin nodes do not trust anyone. Instead, they verify everything for themselves. And so you'll often hear people say that Bitcoin is a trustless system. And what this means is it doesn't mean that you can't trust Bitcoin, but it means that you don't need to trust it or the network. Instead, you can verify everything for yourself, going all the way back to the first block and the first Bitcoin transactions in early 2009 when Satoshi launched Bitcoin. So this is why it's so important to run your own node, because if you're not running your own Bitcoin node, you're going to need to rely on someone else's Bitcoin node, for example, Trezors or Coinbase's, to access the Bitcoin blockchain. It's very easy to run your own node. You can just download Bitcoin Core on a laptop, an old laptop or a desktop. I'll link to this in the description notes below that will teach you how to do this, how to download Bitcoin Core and run it on your computer so you too can verify that all the transactions and blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain and network are following the consensus rules. If you want a little bit more handholding, you can also check out my paid course where I teach you not only how to run your own Bitcoin node, how to do multi-sig, how to hook up your hardware wallet to the Bitcoin node, but also how to buy Bitcoin anonymously, how to do coin join, how to do some of these really cool things that I'm currently not able to talk about on this YouTube channel. So I'll stick a link to this paid course in the description notes below. And I'll also add a coupon code there. So make sure that you use the coupon code YT99 as well to get the best price. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.